Hello, I'm Lisa Tucker Kellogg from the Duke NUS Medical School in Singapore. Today I'll speak to you about the paniculus layer in human heels. I'm asking if this thin muscle layer might be a natural form of protection from mechanical damage and pressure ulcers. I declare that I have no conflict of interest. First, I'll introduce the paniculus layer. This is a thin sheet of muscle that sits underneath the skin, attached to the skin. In many animals, it's widespread around the body, but in humans, we only have a paniculus layer in a few specific regions, such as the neck, the palms and wrists, and the sternum. In humans, this muscle is considered vestigial, which means it has no known function. However, surgeons discovered, after removing the paniculus, that at the wrist, it does serve a protective function for cushioning the nerves of the wrist joint. Well, if that's true for the wrist, then could something similar be true for the heel? Do humans even have a paniculus layer at the heel? This project has three steps. First, to find out whether humans have a paniculus layer at the heel. To answer it, we dissected cadavers. Second, to find out whether a paniculus layer would provide any significant cushioning. To answer it, we performed biomechanical simulations. And finally, to assess whether the paniculus layer can grow back after a pressure injury, we studied pressure injuries in mice. For the first question, do human heels have a paniculus layer? Here are microscope slides taken from cadaver dissection. You can see many fibrous structures. The human heel has thick columns of collagen, and if you're not looking for muscle, you would just see lots of collagen. When we stained red for muscle and blue for collagen, the paniculus layer popped right out. This red part is muscle, not collagen, and the upper right is a close-up of the fibers showing that they are really made up out of muscle cells. Eight out of eight people had a paniculus layer, so we conclude that human beings do have a paniculus layer at the heel. It's sort of amazing that in this day and age, we are still not finished discovering human anatomy. The paniculus layer is very thin, about one millimeter, and that brings us to our second question. Since the paniculus layer is so thin, how much mechanical protection can it really provide? We built a finite element model, a mathematical model, with simple mechanics of different layers. Shown here is one model with a paniculus layer in the heel, that's one millimeter thickness of muscle. Another model was built side by side to be exactly the same except the soft tissue had no muscle layer. Then we computed in three dimensions how the tissues would respond to pressure. We put the heel resting on a solid support surface and simulated the deformation. Simulations show a comparison of what happens without the paniculus layer versus with the paniculus layer. Without, there's a lot of red. That means quite a lot of deformation in the red regions. But with the paniculus layer, the deformation is much milder, just pink and white color. Next, we plotted bar charts. This shows how much of the soft tissue volume gets subjected to harsh levels of stress and strain. And you see that when the heel has a paniculus layer, there's a dramatic decrease in the number of tiny regions in the mathematical model experiencing high strain and high stress. That's a big improvement from just one millimeter of muscle. The key is that muscle tissue is both firm and elastic. Being firm and elastic makes muscle excellent for cushioning the interface between hard bone and soft skin. Finally, our third question is whether the paniculus layer is good at growing back after a pressure ulcer. We used mice to create a set of equal injuries affecting skin and the paniculus layer. We found that the skin grows back quickly in about 20 days. After 40 to 90 days, we looked at the interior layers by microscope. The wound has closed and the skin surface is fully healed, but underneath the paniculus muscle layer has failed to regenerate. The margins around the wound show a normal paniculus layer, but at the center of the wound, the paniculus layer did not grow back. Here is another view of the same failure. The bar chart shows skin regenerates quite well, but the regeneration of the paniculus layer is not very much more than zero. We took another look at the problem of paniculus regeneration. 
using mice that have multicolor fluorescent proteins genetically encoded in the muscle. You can see that the paniculus layer is a sheet of muscle fibers. They're coated by different fluorescent colors. And you can see these fibers have a hole. There's a hole in the sheet. That's where the wound used to be. So the muscle fibers failed to regenerate across that gap. In conclusion, we've answered three questions. Do human heels have a paniculus carnosis layer? The answer is yes. Every cadaver studied had a significant paniculus layer. Next, does the paniculus layer provide mechanical protection? We found yes, it dramatically decreases the amount of tissue volume that experiences harsh stress and strain when the heel is resting in a supine position. Third, does the paniculus layer regenerate after a pressure ulcer? The answer in mice is that it does not regenerate very well. Mice usually regenerate better and faster than humans. So if mice can't regenerate the paniculus layer, then it's a good guess that humans will have trouble regenerating it too. What we take away from this work is firstly, that the paniculus does have a function at the heel. It serves to cushion the soft tissues. But next, if the paniculus does not regenerate after a wound, then the heel would lose its natural cushioning. That would make the heel more susceptible to future pressure injuries. We know that pressure ulcers often recur at the same site after healing. And this problem with the paniculus layer not regenerating properly might help us explain the tendency of pressure ulcers toward recurrence. Our third takeaway is that prophylactic dressings, dressings that we designed for preventing development of pressure injuries, these could be designed to mimic the paniculus layer by using a firm elastic layer, the same thing nature has already evolved. And finally, we're seeking clinical collaborators in imaging, especially ultrasound, to help us develop a measure of paniculus damage. One day in the future, patients could have their paniculus evaluated non-invasively as a biomarker for predicting who has increased risk of developing a pressure ulcer. This project is joint work with an excellent team of people. Jana and Alberto did a lot of the work. I'd like to thank the funding bodies who paid for this project and thank you for your attention. Please contact me if you're interested in collaborating on our next step.